So let's break down this LA Clippers roster for the 2024-2025 NBA season. You look at this team and, and immediately when I when I look at the depth chart, when I look at this roster, what I think will be the roster in the depth chart, I just have to admit, this might be the best defensive team in the league. Certainly you have the likes of the Boston Celtics and you have those these other teams that, that have elite defense from top to bottom. Time will tell who's the best, but there's no reason this, this Clippers team is not firmly in the discussion there. A very, very great defensive team. That being said, outside of the defensive component, there are obviously a lot of concerns. I think it was a good offseason for what they could have done in replacing a superstar player of Paul George's caliber. You don't really win those scenarios. You can only try to make it the best you can. And I think that's what they did. Because this this is a team that when I look at it, I don't think they're going to win a championship. I don't consider, consider them a legit contender. But what I do see is a team that certainly can make the playoffs, but it does hinge upon the health of Kawhi Leonard, which is something you don't really want to be in a situation to do if you're a fan. The knee situation is obviously a massive concern. When Kawhi is healthy, he's one of the premier players in the NBA. We know that. You don't get much better than Kawhi Leonard. But we saw the issue, and, and now it, it has to be concerning and draw attention of whatever the USA situation was. Now, we don't know the full extent to that, so I'm not going to speculate and give every detail about that. However, obviously something was wrong. And if that is something that's going to continue to carry on for the LA Clippers, as it has the past four years, then this is something that, you know, it's not going to go pretty. Because you take Kawhi off this team, and it's really not going to look good. But let's look at this roster. So for myself, the starters I have, and this is a deep team. That is something I also give them. They're a very, very deep roster. I don't know exactly if this is going to be a starting lineup because a lot of these guys fluctuate. I can give you guys the guarantee. The, the locks for starters, I think, would be James Harden is going to be a starting point guard. And then Kawhi, he, he will be starting and Zubach will be starting. Okay. You got those three guys solidified. For me, what I look at right now, I think a lineup that could work is a Terrence Mann, Derek Jones Jr. then at the 2-3. Derek Jones Jr. was a very good pickup for them. Had an incredible year, his best career season out there in Dallas last year. He comes over, an incredible defensive option, improved his three-point game. Obviously, we know his extremely balanced has always been that. He shifts into that, that starting spot. And you have Terrence Mann, who I think could take another jump. I've always loved what he brings to the team, but he's had to play a role. Now there's a lot more opportunity to be that guy this year, and so I could see Terrence Mann taking that jump. However, in the same breath, you know, I see a potential that we have other guys starting here. You could easily run out a Batum starter. You could also run out Norman Powell starting who I think actually has a good chance at doing just that. Chris Dunn could also be a potential spot starter, although if we're going to go for him because his defense, I'm, I, I don't see why Derek Jones would not start over him. So that's what I got for your starting lineup. But then this bench is where it gets interesting. you got a guard battle going on currently between Kevin Porter Jr. and, and Bones Highland. You know, the Kevin Porter Jr. situation is tragic. It's not something I really want to get into today. Not a fan of what he did at all. Obviously, it's disgusting. And to be back in the NBA is one thing. I am, you know, do I think those kind of guys should be in the NBA game? No, I don't. However, I have to grade this because he's in the NBA. The NBA allows that to happen. And it's not the only team that does it. I'm not going to act like that. We have a situation on Charlotte with Miles Bridges. All right. So this isn't something that's just a rarity situation. So I'm not just going to throw Clippers underneath the bus here completely. But end of the day, I have to look at what the roster is. And you have Kevin Porter Jr. He's a talented player. But he's a locker room headache. Now, hopefully this past year has changed a lot of things for him. If it has not done so, then this is going to be a chaotic situation having him there. I don't think he's going to last very long. But if he has changed himself, then this could be one of the most undervalued pickups in the entire of the entire offseason. You're talking about a guy that has the capability to get buckets. And you put him in position to be able to do just that. And so you have Bones Highland KPJ battling for that backup guard spots. And, you know, it's interesting. Bones Highland is another guy that... He's had ups and downs. You know, he has the ability to score at will. He's also not the most playable guy in tight, important situations. So we'll have to figure that out. Not necessarily the highest on the backup guard spot, but that's what they have right now. What I do love that shooting guard spot, you're battling between Norman Powell, Terrence Mann. You can go offense, you can go defense, you can go a mixture, whatever the case is. I like those two guys. That's a very, very solid group there. And then you throw in the youngster too. I'll just throw him out there. Cam Christie. I like that pickup a lot. I don't think he's going to be a guy that's going to contribute too much to this team this year unless things go sideways and they're going to be rebuilding. But what I do see is a guy that can be developed. Maybe he gets some spot minutes, but he's a guy that I do like that draft pick just to highlight that because he 
He was a good draft pick in my opinion. Then you go with the Chris Dunn edition. Love that one. He's a guy that revived his career and has officially found himself in a good role. He knows how to play defense correctly, play hard. He's an elite defensive player, Maya Ab. And he's a guy that you can see in rotation contributing consistently. And then you have Amir Coffey. He's a guy that's obviously been around for a few years. He knows his role. He's going to bring just that to the team this year and should be valuable in that regard. Then you go down, like I said, Nick Batum is a guy I would not be surprised starting. There's, there's a, so many lineup combinations you have with this team. It's very hard to pinpoint what it's going to be because this team has depth and it's probably going to take some time. We might not know until January, February what this team's lineup is going to look like. And that's even if they don't do any trades. So Batum's another guy I do like a lot. And then you have Kobe Brown. He's a guy that I've, I've always liked. And I think he could take a jump if given the proper minutes because he is very, very talented and I would love to see him get more minutes and opportunity. Then you get to the center spot. Mo Bamba has not been able to establish himself as a role, his role in the NBA to this point yet. However, when it comes to Mo Bamba, he does have the ability to play. And he's going to have to play because there's nobody else behind him at center. You have P.J. Tucker, essentially, who I don't even know if he's going to be on the roster to begin with, because that leads me to my other point. You do have a roster battle, essentially, in training camp between P.J. Tucker and Kai Jones. Now, maybe both don't make it. I don't know, but... That's essentially what's going to happen because Kai Jones is on a non-guaranteed deal. He could get promoted to a two-way deal, but we'll see who kind of earns that minutes there. But that is the weakness I do see for the Clippers. They don't have the depth at center that I'd like to have. You look at the depth everywhere else, pretty darn good, especially that that shooting guard small forward power forward spot. The point guard spot has depth, but it's questionable depth. You know what I'm saying with, with KPJ and Bones that I discussed. But the center spot is very questionable because Zubac is good. I like him. There's no issues there. However, you know, he's obviously not an elite guy, but the, the backups behind him is, is, is very shaky and questionable. I'm not sure I'm going to trust Bamba if something happens to, to Zubac. And I don't know if I'm going to trust Tucker either. And Tucker's not even a legitimate center either. So that is definitely a weakness for the Clippers. I'd like to see them address. And, you know, let's be honest too. This isn't really the roster I thought the Clippers would head into when they're talking about building the stadium in which they built and they just opened up. The most spectacular stadium in the NBA – in the Intuit Dome and, you know, them rolling out a potential contender with Paul George probably was the ideal situation, but it's not. You don't have that situation here and you're gonna have to adapt. And so this is still a good team. And most importantly though, at the helm of it all, you have Tyron Lue. When it comes to one of the top coaches in the NBA, he's certainly up there. Coach Spo is the best coach and I don't think there's any debate about that in my opinion. But then certainly the next group right underneath Coach Spo, Tyron Lue is certainly highly up there. You know, you could either say number two even. I love what, what Ty Lu is brings to the coach. He's one of the best out there. So you got him leading this team. They're going to be a playoff team, obviously, as long as Kawhi is healthy. This team has a chance to be good. But are they contenders? I don't think so. However, this team is not a team that anybody's going to want to play. Let me make that clear. These guys don't want to play this type of defense in the regular season. So they should be able to get a lot of wins in the regular season. They're going to play hard. And it's going to be a team that, if you're an LA Clippers fan, you should be able to embrace this team. Because... Everyone on this team should give you everything they have, and they're going to play great defense. They're going to play hard. And then you also have a guy, and, and you have a hometown hero still, and James Harden. You have a hometown hero still, and Kawhi Leonard. You've got just a great overall team that should be easy to root for and support. So Clipper fans, you know, this might not be a year you're going to win a championship. But the past few years, at the end of the day, you never expected to have your team healthy for the playoffs anyways. So have a team that, for the most part, you can look at and say, I know these guys are going to play hard. They're going to leave it all out there should be refreshing, should be energizing. And, and I think this is going to be a team that, that Clipper fans should be excited to watch because of those factors right there. So this is a team, like I said, probably not contenders, but could they certainly be a team that's going to be interesting, shake things up and make it very difficult for a lot of good teams without a shadow of doubt because this team has potentially the best defense in the entire NBA.